the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Now, obviously, Calvinists will say, well, the all doesn't really mean all men. It's like, well, does it ever mean all then? All these verses you're just changing, does it ever mean all when it says all? Hello, Pastor Jeff Dollar here once again. We have been going through Mr. Stuckey's assertions against Calvinism, these proof texts that he's been bringing up to disprove Calvinism. And once again, I'd like to thank him for that in taking the time to put these together because what he is doing is he is, is capsulizing these proof texts, putting them in order so that it makes it easier uh, for someone like myself to find them, uh, to then listen to them and, and to rebut them. Because uh, what we find is we'll have a sermon sometimes an hour long, and I don't have the time to go through and listen to the entire sermon and then to pick out what I need for a video like this. But what he's done is he's taken the proof text that are uh, supposedly against Calvinism and bringing them out and putting them in a very short uh, segment so that uh, we then can answer them in a rather uh, quick manner as well. And that's what I'd like to do with this one. This is 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 10, where it says, For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Now, Mr. Stuckey is saying that this verse, obviously, to anyone who just looks at the verse and reads it, means that Jesus died for all men. So, uh, looking at, at this, we, he, he, then, he then asserts that Calvinists never would, would say that the word all means all. We have to somehow try to push that word aside and say, well, it, always, it doesn't mean all here, it doesn't mean all there. Uh, let's just say that it does mean all here. The problem is not the word all in this passage when it comes to his position. The problem is the word Savior. What does it mean when it says that God is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. I think it's important that we properly define the word Savior. Is God the Savior of all men? The person who, who dies as an unbeliever and then goes to hell, suffers for his sins, is God his Savior? Has God actually saved that individual? No, he has not. God is, is not that man's Savior in that sense, in the sense of his sins, saving him from the consequences of his sins. However, God is the Savior of men in other ways. Uh, we, we can look at the uh, scriptures and see how the word saved is used. It's not always used in the sense of being saved from sin. It's used in other ways as well. Psalm 18 and verse 3, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. God is a savior from my enemies. He delivers me from a, a, an attack, perhaps a military attack, uh, su such as David. He is delivered by God. He's saved. God is his savior in that sense. Uh, saved from drowning, we could say. In Matthew chapter 8 and verse 25, Jesus is sleeping on the boat. There's waves crashing against the, the, the boat, and the disciples are afraid they're going to die. Uh, they go down and they wake Jesus up. Jesus, don't you care that we're perishing? Uh, we find in, in, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 25, And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. You can be saved from shipwreck. Acts chapter 27, and verse 31. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. So God had given Paul the vision that they were all going to be saved in, in this uh, horrible tragedy of this shipwreck, but yet there are certain things that had to, to, to come to pass, and Paul was instructing uh, the captain of the ship and, and those who were in charge, saying this, you have to do this, you have to do that, and that's what they did, and sure enough, they were all saved from drowning in the sea. Uh, so God was their savior in that sense. So Savior has a variety of meanings. You go to the Old Testament in Judges chapter 3 and verse 9, you have Othniel, who was a, a, one of the judges, is called a Savior. If you go to the Greek Old Testament, that's the word that's used there. One who delivers Israel 
from their enemies as a savior. So how is God the savior then of all men? God is the sustainer of life. He is a preserver of life. Now we find Matthew chapter 4 verse 45 that ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. He provides for the needs of all men. He preserves them. Acts chapter 17 verses 24 through 28 the Apostle Paul brings all this out. God that made the world and all things therein seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with man, men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell in all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed in the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they may feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we also are his offspring. God is our provider, our protector, just as, as, as human beings. He gives all human, human beings life and breath and what they need to survive. He is their preserver. He is their savior in that sense. He is not the savior of all men in the sense of their salvation. I mean, if you look to uh, Romans chapter 5, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And 1 Thessalonians 1.10, And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Now we'll be getting more into this in our next video concerning propitiation. Uh, that is that that uh, Christ is the propitiation for not just our sins but for the sins of the whole world we'll look into this as well there but is does God save all men from the wrath of God no he does not but he is the preserver of all men he takes care of all men especially those that believe his chosen people the people of his special uh, inheritance, his treasure. He especially takes care of them, and in the sense that he goes beyond providing their needs. He goes beyond preserving their bodies. He saves their soul. So God is the Savior, the pre preserver, the protector of all men, the giver of life of all men, uh, but he's especially the Savior of those that believe. So yes, uh, we would say that that is talking about all men, but the term Savior is the issue here. He does not save all men in the sense of giving them eternal life and saving them from the wrath of God, but he does preserve them. So then, once again, I'd like to give Mr. Stuckey the challenge to take the time to look at what I have taught here concerning this particular verse, to these, these different aspects that he has not brought up, and then refute me to prove me wrong. If you can prove me wrong from the scriptures, I do not want to be teaching error, and I will gladly recant my teaching. I will repent of my false doctrine, and I will believe what, what he is teaching. But I need to be proven that from the scriptures. Now what we've seen here, the, the, the idea of the wrath of God, we'll get into more in the, in the next video, but men are under the wrath of God. They, if, if, they're, if they are, are not believing in the Son, they are under condemnation already they're already condemned and they remain condemned god is not their savior from sin not in, until they believe um, i'm hoping that this video was a help to you and i want to thank you for your time and may the lord bless you in your search for truth